Hi everybody, Jillian here. Welcome back to my channel for a new heritage scrapbook layout chair. So today I have an assortment of photos here and they're all of two different couples and I have a couple supplies here that I know I want to use. So I made this layout using three 3x4 three photos of my son on his rocking lamb. I used five different pattern papers here, some from the Crate Papers Little You collection, this is the reverse of that, um, Maggie Holmes Shine, uh, and these three are from Maggie Holmes Shine collection. And then I used the stickers, uh, alpha stickers, and chipboard embellishments from also from the Little You Boys chipboard sheet. So this came together really quickly. I used scraps that I had, so I cut this down to 9 by 12, and then I used this uh, 3 inch strip and just trimmed a little bit off and just layered paper there and didn't overthink it. Uh, I pulled my colors from the rug in his bedroom and it came together pretty easily. This clip is from Hobby Lobby from their flea market, from their flea market fancy collection. And so this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to recreate this layout twice with photos about my great grandparents and my husband's great grandparents. Really the only thing I have to figure out is which photos I'm going to use of all of these and then which pattern papers I want to use and that's pretty much it. The embellishments, I'm not sure how that's going to go yet, that will be determined by the papers that I choose and which collections I want to go with. The only thing I do know are there are three things that I want to use. I want to use this 4x6 paper pad from Studio Calico and it just has a bunch of neutral grids and I'm going to use this to stamp on. and. I'm going to be using a couple Allie Edwards stamps. This is from her Roots Story Kit. And then I also think I might try and figure out how to use the Old and New Story Stamp. I think that is what it was called. And so I'm going to do, a, I'm going to try and do a lot of stamping on these layouts because I bought this a while ago when she had a sale on past story stamps and kits and things like that um, with the intention of using it for these projects. And then the last thing I know I want to use is this DIY shop paper pad. I got it at Michael's uh, a while ago, and it just has some really great old uh, pattern papers in it from mostly older crepe paper collections. These are great for backgrounds and, and things like that. So that's all I have figured out. I really only have the three photos of my husband's family selected, and then these are my great grandparents. I'm not sure which ones I want to use. I have some really great photos of them that I've come into and then I also have this newspaper article. I know that I'm not going to use this today um, but I do want to figure out a way to use it. This obviously wouldn't fit into this, the layout sketch that I showed you earlier. So that's where I am right now. I'm going to figure out a few more things and then come back and show you guys what I create. Okay everybody, I am back. A few days have passed now and I wanted to show you what I had come up with. So I have the original layout here that I created of my son and then I went ahead and took this design and basically uh, replicated it. This is the first one that I did, so I'll put the other two away for a moment. Uh, this is a photo of my great grandparents from the 30s and then this is them in the 80s and I veered quickly away from the photo placement so I only had two 3x4 photos that I wanted to use for this page. I had a lot you'll remember but I really wanted to pair these two up because they were so similar. My great grandfather was not wearing glasses in this photo or this one and he was in most of the others. So I use this background paper from We Are Memory Keepers. I think this is from their Flower Girl collection. This gingham is one of my favorites. It is from Maggie Holmes Bloom Collection. This is also from the Bloom Collection. And then this pink paper is from We Are Memory Keepers. I think it's also from the Flower Girl Collection. I used a lot of stickers from the Maggie Holmes Bloom Collection here and just layered them around. I used some October Afternoon Daily Flash Alpha stickers for the title. I didn't want to use thickers because there was a lot going on down here. And I am just going to journal on here later. I haven't decided what I want to put on this label. You'll remember that I said I wanted to use the Allie Edwards story stamp, either the Roots and or the old and new stamps that she has. And 
I only used one for this layout. I used this little box from the Roots stamp set, and then I stamped this Our Story using the Week in the Life stamps that came in the Week in the Life kit, also from Allie Edwards. I used this grid paper from the Studio Calico 4x6 paper pad. It's all entirely grids, and I thought that would be a great alternative to just plain white paper to stamp on. So that's a look at the first layout. The second one here stayed very true to the original layout and for some reason to me it looks crooked. I'm not sure if it looks crooked to you, but I haven't quite figured it out what figured out what it is. Um, so what I ended up doing, I again used this little tab here uh, using this box from the Roots stamp and inside that I stamped Love This Story of Us. So the Love This came from a Studio Calico stamp set. The story of came from the Roots stamp set, and then us also came from this stamp. Originally I had used this timeline down here, that's why it's stained yellow. I had a different card here for journaling, but didn't like the way that it looked. I really wanted to bring some color in here, and I'm not sure where I'm going to do the journaling yet. I might do it around the ampersand, but as I was researching this couple, these are my husband's great-grandparents, I realized that I had already written a lot of their history as a couple on the family page, which has their five or six children with them. So I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do here. I might talk to my mother-in-law and see what she remembers and, uh, you know, get some of, get that perspective instead of the very factual elements that I can find on um, Ancestry or Family Search and those kinds of websites. Also for the date, I ran out of the Teresa Collins number stickers that I usually use. So what I did instead was take these Kelly Perky stamps. It's from a stamp and cut pack that she has that's now available at Michael's I think and I stamped in some Coral Bay color theory ink and then just hand wrote the date and I wanted to um, pick up this peachy color here and some colors from the florals and so I put that in three places I wasn't sure of the exact date of these photos I guess this is the 30s and this is the 40s and I knew the year for this one because it was at their 50th wedding anniversary and then the title here is in thickers along the side and just has their names. So to give you a refresher, these two layouts have Evelyn and Melvin and Myron and Alda because that is kind of the formula that I'm going for in these, in these albums. I have a tree in the front of the album and I will share that with you once it's presentable. I have a tree in the front of the album and then I break it down by family. So there's a divider for each family. It starts off with the matriarch and patriarch of that family individually, shows them growing up, and then it shows them as a couple, and then it shows their whole family, and then from there we move on to, you know, their kids that is in our lineage. I hope that makes sense to you not seeing it in an album, but I basically have a page for every person in the family tree, every couple in the family tree, every family in the family tree, and then any interesting stories that I might find along the way. The last layout here is very different from these other two. I wasn't really focusing on the same layout, I just, on the same format, I just felt inspired to do this one. I still have a lot of journaling left to go. Um, that's probably the last and most difficult uh, piece to this puzzle. I want to make sure I get the journaling right and it usually involves talking to other family members most of who are out of state and so that's pretty much the last thing I do on every layout. Um, so I was able to use the then and now stamp. This is from the old and new story stamp and I stamped that also on the aqua grid paper and then just fussy cut around the circle since it's a messy circle. I use some Maggie Holmes Bloom paper here. These stickers are from We Are Memory Keepers. And then I just layered up some of the pattern papers. And then I used some washi with gold hearts on it from the Bloom washi pack. I have the Teresa Collins number stickers here. I used some vellum hearts just to provide a little embellishment and some enamel dots from Basic Gray. So this photo was taken in 1956 at my great grandparents' 25th wedding anniversary and this one at their 50th wedding anniversary in 1981. I really want to get some good information recorded here so that involves talking to one of my aunts or, 
or somebody like that. So this is the last layout that I did. Now I have three more layouts ready to go into my heritage scrapbook. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to join me and letting me share these things with you. Be sure to tune in next week for another heritage scrapbook layout share. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.